everyone, my name's Laura, welcome to my channel. Um, I've decided today to do a craft project. It's got almost like a three-step stage to it. So by that, I'm going to be showing you today how to actually paint your own galaxy-inspired cabochons. So by that, I have a, a few examples here. Um, so using glass cabochons, nail polish and alcohol inks to create these kind of galactical designs. It's not showing brilliantly because the light is reflecting on it. Okay, so you can see that there. Um, another one here. In fact, this is the one that I've done for the project that I'm about to show you. So this is how one of them turned out. Um, we've got another one here. You know, they're all so individual how they all turn out. They don't have to just be galaxy inspired, you know, you can have, um, I'm actually going to show you how to do one like this as well. Really love how this one turned out. Um, there's just loads and loads of ideas that you can do. I've painted trees onto them, little tree of life kind of effect. Um, you can just have a bit of an arty pattern. Um, what else have we got? Dragon's eyes. I love doing dragon's eyes with these. Um, have I got a dragon's eye here? This isn't one of the best dragon's eyes that I've done, but there's one just here. I do love how, they, how it's turned out, actually. Every time I look at it, I just I love the effect. And this is one of those that, again, once you've uh, set it in its actual um, piece, it just transforms it. Um, so then, yeah, again, we've got kind of like a swirly one just here, just kind of like a blue swirly one. This is just like a cool flowery kind of swirly patterny one, um, more swirls. So, you know, it's never ending. You can literally just go on and on and on with these. Um, did I show you this one? This was one that, this is one that I'm actually going to show you in the demo. This is how this one turned out. It needs a bit of cleaning up. I will explain that. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Um, and then just for fun, just because I could, I did two, just because I could, and it was a little bit of fun. I thought I would do, cause it's so cold. It's, um, it's coming towards mid, um, November at the moment and, uh, yeah, it's cold. Um, so I actually did a little snowy scene with a little snowman. I just thought it was a bit of fun. Um, so I'm going to wrap that, probably give it to one of the kids. And then, because I really like how that turned out, I kind of wanted to go for a snowstorm effect. Created this one. I don't think it's quite as um, the effect I wanted with the snowstorm effect, but I actually really just love how it turned out. How cool is that? So again, I'm going to wrap that with some copper wire. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to actually do the cabochons, and that's going to be done in today's tutorial. Then I'm going to be showing you two more tutorials over the next couple of days or whenever you're watching this. They should already be uploaded. If they are, I'll insert little tabs here somewhere. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways of wrapping them. So I'm going to show you how you can kind of freeform wrap them. So this one I've just put like little star glitter shapes in, I think. That's what that one was. Um, so it's more kind of freeform effect. This one here, which is just a really glittery one. Um, this is just all samples. I'm gonna, we, you know, we don't know what the ones I'm gonna show you are gonna turn out like. These are just ones I could just show you. Again, this one, and then this one is, I'm gonna show you the same technique on how, it's the same technique to wrap all of them. It's just, everyone comes out slightly different. And then the third and final tutorial that I'm gonna show you is how to just do a nice clean, non-fussy finish to the pendant so i'm going to show you in these in another video so this is stage one then i'm going to show you the messy wrap or messy the free form wrap and then i'm going to show you the clean version as well sounds dodgy so yeah anyway i hope you like this video and uh sit back and enjoy you're going to get messy i'm going to warn you about that this is a messy technique in fact I have my nails done today they are still paint um stained from the alcohol ink you see like the little blue edging that was a fun story to tell to my nail technician enjoy okay so here i have the materials that we're going to be using so i've got the glass cabochon okay now you can buy these in various sizes off of amazon i'll pop some links down below for you um 
normally about packs of 20 or 50 I think I'm not quite sure but you can get different sizes you can get this size you can get like the slightly smaller size that we've got here this is going to be ideal if you wanted to sort of to make a ring you could place that as a a ring okay um i personally prefer the slightly larger sizes just because i find they're a little bit better for pendant and you can get more space to work your designs on the other size is there is a size again larger now this one was where i ordered a pack of dragon eye pendants or cabochons and they came with the paper on the back with the dragon eye design now some of them i liked and some of them i didn't some of them are quite cool some of them are you know this is a, a pre-printed dragon's eye i like that one um i've got another one here that again is a pre-printed dragon eye i quite like this one this is the same size as this one i don't love this one so much i don't like the round pupils quite so much um so what i did and there was some that were just not very pretty but they were very affordable again they were under 10 pound so what i did was i actually love the fact that this is a larger size again and i didn't I did look, but I was unable to find this size cabochon plain without any kind of um, picture on it. So what I did was I just popped it into a bowl of water, popped all the ones I didn't like into a bowl of water, um, and I just let the back soak off, and then I'm able to use it as a plain cabochon. There's also a smaller ones. That's where I actually got a lot of the smaller cabochons from as well, because again, this is one of the ones that I ran again. I don't like this one very much. And the designs were the same in the larger ones. So again, I just soaked off the back in and used the cabochon. So there are ways. I will put the links down below for you anyway, for you to be able to purchase them if you want to. So I also have a, um, just like a glass tile. It's not even a glass tile. It's a small picture frame, just a glass picture frame, plain one. And I just took the glass section out of it because it's perfect for me to be able to use my blue tack or in this case white tack um, to be able to pop this on and then place my cabochon on okay so what I can then do is turn it over and I can get an idea of what the pattern's looking like obviously I'm not going to flip it right upside down like that because the moment I do that ink and nail polish will go everywhere but it enables you to kind of lift it and to look underneath and see if you're happy with the way the design is going because otherwise you're going to have to keep picking it up and trying to look as well that's when you get into a bit of a mess you know get the polish and everything all over your hands and that's also you can sometimes disturb the design mine has as you can see been well used it's got paints and acrylics and everything all over it but i've got an area that i can work on and i apologize if it is a little bit distracting i have also popped it onto some white paper just for you to be able to see what i'm doing um, as opposed to the cutting mat that i've got underneath it now i do also have here some white acrylic paint i have just bought a cheap pack of acrylic paints from probably hobbycraft or the works somewhere like that very inexpensive again less than 10 pound for just your basic mix um it's nice to have the black if you want to paint your own dragon's eye they're really good to do the center of a dragon's eye with or if you want to paint a bit of detail on um you know i've used it just to maybe paint like a, a little tree if you want to make the base of the tree with the paint and then um you know use your nail polish for the rest of the detail so you know it's good to have the paints as well if you want to make that detail i then also have as you'll probably see here i'm just going to turn the camera for you to see um a selection of alcohol inks and nail polishes now i've chosen i've got all of my alcohol inks out and i have chosen a selection of what i feel are galaxy inspired um nail polishes as you can see there's a range there with glitters there's blues there's purples there's pinks there's gold um, and what i'm going to do also is i've got my staples i'm just going to pop you back where you should go i've also got my staples of um clear nail polish because that's going to be quite important when it comes down to adding your alcohol inks i've got my black nail polish which is um great for adding the detail and also for coating the back of the cabochons with um and i've got a white nail polish over in that selection as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started oh i also forgot i do also have and i bought this again off of amazon um it's just like a nail painting kit and it came i'm going to put nail polishes in here it's the kind of thing i like to do oh look they're perfectly 
galaxy inspired um, I'll just pop these over here quickly so the nail polishes that I have bought ones like this this makeup gallery these are a pound from the pound shop so um i've bought a few from the pound shop again i've bought a black i've bought some reds i think i found a white um i got these some of these i what i try to do is buy them when they're on offer so if it's a buy two get one free that sort of deal i'll tend to get the cheaper nail polishes and get three um my third one for free um i also go into charity shop charity shops um, I think I got this one for again a pound in a charity shop and also sometimes again if you go into Poundland you will be able to find like I got this one in Poundland this one is bourgeois bourgeois however you say it um, and what they do in Poundland is they have like a little section with some sort of branded makeup and they're all a pound so i got this one for a pound i've got this one in silver somewhere as well and need this one's really cool if i shake it if i shake it you'll see it's like little gold flakes hopefully you can see that so this is really cool again just for adding that little like, added detail the reason i've done that is just because it's easier than trying to kind of continuously use it from a larger container Oh, okay, that's the boring stuff done. I also use cotton pads as well um, and cotton buds. I also use some cotton buds just to tidy up and cotton uh, pads just to tidy up as you go along, just if in case it kind of um, gets a bit messy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this project started. What I'm going to start off with is finding one of my glitter nail polishes. Now, I've got quite a few that can be used. I've got this one which has got a bit of a finer kind of glitter going through it this one which is more kind of gold flakes what i like about these especially this one is that it is actually in a clear polish which is brilliant for when you're working with your alcohol inks and mixing them together um again i've got some that are more multicolored. so I have this one here which has more sort of multicolors into them so the beauty of this is you can just do as many as you want and each one's going to turn out different. You can just try different colorways, different ideas. Again, I've got this one, which is quite multicolored. This one, which is quite multicolored. Obviously, you want it to stand out as well against what you're kind of working with. So I think, seems as we're going for like galaxy. If you can hear that noise in the background, sorry, it's Savannah, my French bulldog, who was sound asleep by my feet and snoring. So, I've decided to go with this Rimmel one, which has got all of these lovely colours in here. Okay. And I'm going to just kind of drop them. Drop it onto the cabochon. So, I'm only doing that because I don't want it to be too overcrowded with the glitter. I'm then going to switch to the clear nail polish that I've got. Again, this is just a standard, um, I don't know, Barry M one. Just a cheap one. But it's quite a staple. You can see this one's been used a lot. And I'm just kind of, again, dropping that on and spreading this out a little bit. Now, I've got to be careful. What I don't want is for my um, Barry M, my clear gloss, to get the glitter into it. So I can just, what I tend to do is just dap it quickly onto the edge brush is clean we're fine okay so the next one that i'm going to do now is i'm going to start to add some alcohol ink so i want to kind of keep it galactical as such so i'm going to just have a little look at the colors that i've got now you can pre-choose them um i'm one of these people that just likes to pick things up and see what happens so okay so I've chosen Stream. Now, one thing to learn, I have learned about alcohol inks is they don't always look like they're looking on the colour here. So it's a bit of a potluck. Oops, that came out a bit quicker than I planned. And I've just popped that on. And what I'm going to do is just kind of let it run a little bit in to that nail polish, okay? I'm then going to pick another colour up. So in this case, I'm going to go purple. I'm going to go for Purple Twilight. And dab that in a couple of places. Okay, and let's go for like a fuchsia pink. 
So this is a magenta. And again, you can kind of get an idea of what the colour is going to look like by, by the mess, I guess. So different brands are slightly different. This one, uh, the other two were Ranger, Ranger brand, and these ones are different. I um, don't know what brand it is. And I'm just going to pop that on here. Okay, so you can see it's starting to run a little bit down the side. I'm not too worried about that. It's fine because we can tidy that up. What I want to do is kind of just run it around a little bit. So this is why I quite like having a tile to work on. Now I'm keeping it quite low because obviously I don't want to hit the camera. So I'm going to put my hand in and we can have a little peek as to how it's looking. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. Okay, what I do also like to do sometimes is just pop it onto the glass and spin it. I always think that's fun. And then have a little look. Now, that will happen. That's absolutely fine. That's just the ink running. Take your cotton bud. You can use that to kind of tidy it up a little bit. So I can start to see now how it's looking. Okay, so we can see we're getting that effect. So this is one of those where you just build it up by doing lots of the same things. See, my hands are already in a mess and this is the first one I've done. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is drop some more of the um, clear nail polish onto it and see if that can get some more movement into it. Again, what we don't want is to, oops, sorry if that made you shake, we don't want to contaminate the actual brush, which I just did, so we can wipe that off, that's fine. This is an old colour, so I need to just, uh, I think I need to get a new clear. Okay, that's fine. What you can also do is give it a little bit of movement with your sort of tools and kind of create some movement and swirls into it. Remember all of this is going to come across into the front. Give it a good mix. Just clean that tool. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, so we're starting to look a little bit like this. We're starting to take shape. So what I'm going to do now, and this is one of my favourite things to do, is I'm going to take the alcohol ink, and this is why I have the alcohol, alcohol, alcohol ink, sorry, the, the spray, um, the rubbing ink, the rubbing alcohol in the spray, and I'm going to just spray that on. That kind of, to me, that will kind of um, re-liquidise almost the alcohol ink that you've put on there. Again, you can give it a little swirl if you want to. Okay, and then I'm going to now add another colour. So... It's easy to get carried away with the colours that you add and it's easy to muddy it up. So what I do want to do is do it a little bit step by step. So again, I'm just choosing the colour pool just to see. Now remember also that once the um, nail polishes and layers start to dry, that everything you add to the back isn't going to show through to the front because the layer is at the front already. So this is where you have to, this is why I quite like to give it a bit of a spray with the rubbing alcohol because it kind of disturbs it all again. Okay, let's take this off, let's give it a spin, see what's going on. Okay, you can see, give it a tidy up. I mean, you're gonna get in a bit of a mess, it's inevitable, I'm afraid. It's part of the fun for me, but. So we can see, and where I swirled it with the tool, a bit of cotton wool, sorry. Where I swirled it with the tool, it's given those kind of swirl effects to it. Can you see that? You can see the light above me. Sorry about that. But that's how we're looking so far. Now, again, I'm not going to stop there. Also, be careful. If the alcohol ink starts to go onto your blue tack, it will lose its sticky. So you have to kind of redo it again. Let it dry. Mix it in. And then redo it. Okay, so we're just going to continue doing this for a few more rotations. So, again, I'm going to give that a little break up. 
and also I've got here some um, special um, the kind of mixative so I've got copper I've got silver and I've got gold so what I'm going to do these are really cool the way that these react so I think I'm going to come in with the gold really love how this one reacts so I have to shake it because they do separate if I show you I don't know if you can see can you see how it's kind of separated on this one so it's like a liquid so it needs to just have a good if you shake it make sure it's mixed it's fine okay I'll just open that up now this one when this hits I don't know what it is about it but wow it makes such a cool effect look at that it's so cool okay so that's happened now the hardest thing for me with something like this is being patient i am so impatient i want to see what it looks like but you have got to try and be a bit patient now this is why it's quite good if you have a couple of them on the go because then you can kind of move over to the next one whilst you wait for that one to set so what i might do is exactly that i'm going to give that a spin mix it in a little bit Let's see what happens so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to take another one and what we'll do with this one is i'm going to make go ahead and i'm going to use the gold leaf effect one and see how this changes it so again give it a good mix drop this on this one I really love if you look and you can put this into whatever pattern you want I mean you can have it kind of just like a little splatter of um, gold leaf okay and then again because I want that um, effect what I might do is come in with a contrast so let's go for copper just shaking that sorry and pop that in no, see how this one reacts slightly differently? So what I'm going to do is come in and spritz that. So that's giving it a bit of a change. Oops. So we can see, okay? Now I'm going to add a bit more colour behind that. So again, I think... I'm going to come in with more kind of ooh, ready fiery tones. Look at this. I love these um, kind of shimmer effect ones. And they come across so cool on a glass cabochon. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just put some drops of this into here. And some little. Let's so see what else we've got. Um, ooh. Should we go for this or do you think this will be too contrasting? Oh, I do like to mix my colours, but I don't think that's right. I'm going to try this one. I think this one's going to look quite cool. Again, it's got a shift to it. So I'm just going to drop that in. And then there. So that's that one. I'm going to give it a spin. Give it a little bit of a mix in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use the silver mixative. Because the silver reacts the same way the gold did. For some reason the copper and the rose gold don't tend to react the same way. But these, oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just the gold that acts like that. So then, a bit of spray, give it all a bit of a break up and see what happens when we spin it. And there we have. So again, it's about waiting. A little look at this one. Oh, don't do that. That will happen. Try and pick it up. Your finger will go in it. So we can see how we're looking on this. So it's looking very um, purpley. You see that? I'm very galactical. So you can see the sparkle of the glitter there. Okay. You can keep it at that. That looks quite cool, I think. Very um, 
galaxy inspired but if you did think well actually i can't really see that gold i want to bring a bit more in what you can do is we'll just shimmy this fellow out of the way a moment okay as we can almost kind of come in and mix it ourselves and so see what happens there and again i'm going to pop a little spritz of uh spray onto that maybe see if we can give it a contrasting background now so i'm going to come in with this again barry m molten metal color here which is a really cool shift to it see if we can pop some color into it and build it up give it a bit more dimension okay give this a bit of a swirl around So it's not showing through as much as I want. So you can see the front there. So that's not showing through quite as much as I would like it to. So I'm just going to have to give it another bit of a mix. Really encourage that. And that can happen sometimes. You get almost like the skin coming off, which obviously is the build up of the nail polish as it's starting to set. So I'm going to turn that around. So what I've done is created some kind of light. We can start to see the shimmer coming through a bit of the green. I don't know if you can see that on there. But you can start to see it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just mix that a little bit more again. Let's take that little extra layer of skin off. And then it pops some more on. Which one did I pop on? I popped on that one, didn't I? I'm going to try and put a bit more of this in. So it can really get in on that gap. So I can see where those gaps are now. Bring that around. Settle it in a little bit. So the shimmer is coming through, but not the colour. So I'm going to come in again with good old trusty spray. Spritz that up a little bit. And kind of just blend that around a little bit. Because by putting that spray on, what it's doing is almost allowing the polish to go through the alcohol ink. I haven't put any purple nail polish on. I've only put on nail coloured inks. Sorry, uh, purple inks. But can you see now how that's starting to get a little bit more kind of depth to it? Okay, so I'm going to just give it one more try. What I might do, come in with a pop of the green. I just want to inject a bit of a different colour tone to it. Okay. It. And then I think what I'm going to do with my final stage is I'm going to give that all a bit of a swirl. And they're going to come in with that gold because I know that gold is hopefully. going to hopefully this will come through I'm going to just kind of <laughs> sorry about that people my son came home okay so let's see how this is looking <coughs> okay so what I tend to do now is actually spray the spray onto the front so I can then tidy up and see exactly what's going on underneath that spray. That's come out really cool actually now. So you can see the true colours of it. But what I love about using the alcohol inks with the nail polish is that to me it just gives a real depth. It gives like a real gloss and shine to it. I just think it adds a little extra element. So you can see those layers. I think that's really quite cool now. I think I'm going to leave it as that. 
turn it over and try not to move it too much because obviously it's still wet. Now with the back you can leave it like this. Sometimes the patterning on the back is quite cool and you might want to just leave it like that. Or you can go ahead and paint a black nail polish over the back of it just to give it a final cover. That's happened because I didn't wait for it to dry properly. It stuck to another one. So do please make sure that it dries properly. This one's better. <laughs> so you can see that's it with a black coating. And I probably will do that. I tend to try to do that as I think it gives a slightly nicer finish. This is another one using contrasting colours. You can see I've used oranges and purples. So that's kind of how that one's came out. So every one that you do will be completely individual. You can see this is one's with, uh, this one's been done with like a shimmer nail polish. So we'll pop this one to one side, let that one dry. And what we'll do is come over to this one and see how we're getting on with this one. So we didn't look at this one, did we? We just, again, I'm just spraying the front. I'm just going to give that a quick wipe over. This was one that we left as was. It's come out pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's galaxy inspired, but I really quite like the way that it's come out. So cotton wool sticking to my hand. Um, I do like the way that that's come out. It's come out pretty cool, right? So again, it's up to you now whether you want to leave it like that or if you think, oh, actually, I want to add some more detail to it. Try not to let the cotton wool go on it. So it's still got a bit of wetness to it. So what I can do is kind of still come in and give all of that a bit of a swirl around and see what's going on now. Oh, that's changed it. So there we are. That's what we're looking at now. So what I can then do is come in and add a nice contrasting background. So I'm going to look at what the colour is at the front. Very blue. So I'm going to add some purples to the back of this. See what happens. I'm going to add some alcohol inks. They're all going to kind of go into those spaces. And I think I'm going to brighten that up with a tad of the magenta. Give it a bit of brightness. I'll give that a spin. I just really like doing that. So that's again how we're looking from the front. So the fact that it's kind of, it's ran down, that's fine. We knew it would. I wanted to settle into it. Okay, so now that has completely changed it. Probably made it a little bit too pink. If I can make sure that that isn't actually on the front. Nope, that's definitely behind. So at this point, what I'm going to do whilst it's still quite as exposed is counteract that with a pop of blue. And maybe even a pop of silver. There we go. Spin it around and see if that's changed the way it looks now. So we'll give that a little bit of run around. That's fine. Have a little run around. Again, you can control this with your hands. But you're just going to get into a big mess if you do it this way. And that's brought a bit of the... Oh, that's better. That's brought a bit more of the colourway back in, hasn't it? Taking away that purple. And that's just completely changed the way that that pendant looks. Actually, I really quite like it like that. So I think I'm going to leave it like that because I think that's pretty cool. So there you go, that's how you can do two galax two different types or as many different types of um, galaxy inspired pendants as you want. But whilst you are here, I just wanted to show you another really super cool way of doing a pendant that ends up looking like this. And also like this. Okay, so if you want to know how to do these, this is again really cool. Part of this kit, or one of the kits, I'm not sure, but again, I'll put the links down below for you. I bought some nail, um, it was just a nail art kit, if I'm honest, and it came with these transfers. So what you do, take yourself a fresh um, cabochon, make sure it's nice and clean. I was going a little bit of a mark onto it, that's fine. And then choose one of these. I think I'm going to go for this one, so I really like the look of that. Take off the... Transfer. Okay, 
Well, I managed to somehow completely destroy that one I was going to use. So I've gone for the one above it. I've just peeled that off and I'm going to just place this on as I want it to go. I really like this one though. Oops. It's not as difficult as I am making it look. Place that on. Okay, so two options. You can put some paint over this and then peel off the um, polish once it, the sticker once it's dry and then paint into that gap or you can just leave it so you can go ahead and just paint onto that and leave the um, transfer in place and have that as a detail because it looks very cool and holographic or you can take that off and just have the um, and then paint it in with another color because once the nail polish is dried um, it will just go into the gaps so it's your choice let's have a look what colors do we want um, I'm gonna go for the colors I like I'm gonna go for my molten metal again because I really like this color and I'm going to just and I think it's very pretty you could just paint a section in one color if you wanted to be really delicate you could kind of really detail this in and you could use um, your paintbrush to get that finer detail but you can just kind of half and half it I think I might half and half it you know so just going into there now in hindsight I should have cut the transfer before I started to paint but it's too late for that now again part of the kit did come with the little nail cutters but I'm not going to try and do it now because it's just going to get really really messy so I'm going to do is going to switch over to my molten metal again but in the more ready and gold tones I'm not using that color because I can't open it so I'm going to go ahead mm, I want something contrasting oh, we'll use this one which is similar okay which is the Rimmel version so I'm going to go ahead and use this and fill in maybe this section here. Now what you will find is some, some nail polishes are more opaque than others. So you may need an extra layer or two. doing this quickly um otherwise i probably would have used a finer paintbrush and just filled this in a little bit more delicately quite like that like that and then i think i'm going to come in with like silver i want to come in with that silver i think this one here i'm just going to fill in the gaps with this i think just to have a free tone uh, I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to keep the transfer in because it's really pretty. It's holographic. But as I said, you could peel it off if you wanted to. Oops. Ah. Don't forget, I'm going to be going over the back with a black colour as well. I'm just going to go in that little gap there. As I said, once it's dried, you can kind of overpaint it. If you're more patient than I am, you could do it section by section. Again, if you've got a couple of these on the go at the same time, yeah. Okay, so my daughter's just come home, so sorry about that. But anyway, there we go. And we turn that over. That is what we're going to be looking at. Well, it's really pretty, right? So what I'll do is I'll let that dry. And then I'll cut around that, paint the back of them black. And that will be your pendant done. Okay, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just quickly tidy and trim this up. So I said, ideally, you would have done this before you went ahead and put the nail polish on. That would have been better. Hang on. So bad enough. What are you eating? Spit. Spit. Savannah. 
Stop eating stuff you shouldn't. Sorry. Okay. Obviously, if you weren't if you weren't going to keep in the holographic, then you could obviously wouldn't have cut it. But if you are, then you go ahead and cut it before you put nail polish on. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit more. Okay, and this is beginning to be wire wrapped anyway, so I'll cover around those edges with some wire wrapping. But there you go, that's your finished piece. I would then go ahead and paint black on the back. I'm not going to do that just yet because it's not quite dry and ready, but that's that one. And then, as I said, we've got oops, the purple one just here, which we can tidy up. That one just there. And then the oops, this one just here. So there you go, that's your pieces. Now if you felt that you still weren't happy and you wanted to adjust them again, you can scratch into them and keep going with the design. But just one thing I'd say is know when to stop. Okay, just know when to stop because it's so easy to get carried away. Um, yeah, and there you go. This one had a little bit of an accident. I hit it with my tool, as you can probably see. Now that will happen if you're not clearing away after yourself or you're... Um, do lots of stuff at once, uh, or if you're like me, I'm just a klutz. So what I'm going to do to fix that is show you quickly. Settle that back down there. Pop a bit of, oh, it might come in with a different colour. I'm going to come in with pistachio. And add that into there. And I might even then come back in with the glitter nail polish. Drop some of that into there. Let's see what happens there. Hopefully that should fix it. And there's your, oh, it's giving it like a dark, stormy kind of look. And again, if you're impatient like me, you want to see how it's going to look. I think it'll quick turn around um, and just keep working. I can still see it's still got some little areas just here and here. So I just need to come back in, add a dot of colour to that and we should be all good to go. Turn it back over. There we go. And let's just fill those gaps in. Once that's polished off, that's actually turned out even nicer now. So yeah, sometimes it's a happy accident. But leave them there, let them dry, pop on your black nail polish, and that will be your finished piece there. And you can see on these ones, they've got like a glittery back. This is just some Mod, mod, mod Pod. Mod Pod that I had, but it happened to have sparkles in it, which was good because I knew it actually... Um, lost the piece but I found actually with this sometimes they tend to stick together so I tend um, don't really want to keep they'll be fine against the skin obviously it's protected but if you leave them too close sometimes they'll stick together so that's not always great so you can see on this one I actually had a holographic now um, transfer and I took it off and then once this I coated it all with the first colour took off the transfer then went over it with the black and that just filled in all those gaps that created that effect. So, yes, I will put a video up showing how you can set these into some wire work. And, yeah, I'd love to see your designs. Let me know how you get on. What do you think? Do you like this technique? Do you like these designs? Um, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you do. Click subscribe and, as always, have a great day.